This is what Japan's next generation stealth fighter will look like. It's a joint project with the UK and Italy, marking Japan's first major military development with a partner other than the US since World War II. Analysts say security considerations in the region are changing, driven by two main factors, prompting countries to rethink their defense strategies. The first and main challenge, it seems to me, is North Korea is continually testing uh, ballistic missiles and violating UN sanctions uh, because that's an unstable situation at any time. Second is really the great power rivalry, the intensification of, I call it an action-reaction uh, engagements between China and the United States militarily. Asia-Pacific is where the economic and military rivalry between the U.S. and China is being played out. The U.S. has been challenging China's expansive and increasingly assertive claims in the South China Sea with what it calls freedom of navigation operations. China's military and political pressure on Taiwan to accept Chinese sovereignty has also increased tensions in the region. We're now back to the normal flow of modern history where the world is divided up into competing great powers and competing power blocks. And that's what we're seeing in the Indo-Pacific region. It's that competition is inevitable. Conflict or war is not inevitable, but it's more of a possibility, I think, going forward than it has been looking backwards. The growing geopolitical uncertainty has seen countries unveil new strategies for the region. That includes Australia's new security and technology pact with the US and the UK. It's also set off an arms race as countries seek to modernize their weaponry. But not everyone believes military might is a useful deterrent. At the defense show in Tokyo, anti-war protesters have a clear message. One important thing for stopping the wars and conflicts going on now is getting rid of weapons. That message, unlikely to be heard in the corridors of power. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera.